Hey folks, Steve Lewis here. Welcome to Relevance for today. Got an amazing, amazing message for you. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be awesome. I'm telling you, it's going to help somebody out there because it's definitely helping me. Stay tuned. Grab a notebook. Grab your Bible. It's going to be a good one. Okay, so we're back, folks. I'm in Grand Falls doing my thing. It is winter time. Chilling out. Grand Falls looks beautiful. I'll take a picture of it afterwards. Snow covered, a little bit of water still flowing. Beautiful day. The main thing is thank you, Lord, for another day that get to talk to some folks around the world. Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you share it with your friends. Spread the word, folks. The, yeah, spread the word. I was just about to say, the uh, studio in the basement, it's almost ready for me to set up my camera down there. I'm excited. We've been doing some recordings down there, but I'm ready to start videoing down there probably the beginning of next week, so stay tuned for that. I'm also going to start recording. I've got three years worth of Bible studies that I've written, inspired by the Holy Spirit, of course. It's not on me, but uh, I'll be loading those as well taking my time and recording those in voice message only probably and I might do video too but they're long so there'll be some part twos part threes and things like that but it's going to help you get into the word just like it's helping me still to this day I'll read some of those bible studies and I'll get some nuggets out of it remember the the lord's word god's word full of good stuff you've heard me say it before this right here is what it's all about the word of god everything you need is right in here. Okay, so with that, I'm not going to go on too long. So the Holy Spirit put me in some verses. Uh, what I mean by that is you'll find sometimes that you'll be reading the word, you'll be praying, and then all of a sudden you'll feel inspired to go to a certain chapter, and then you'll read something that really pertains to you, and that's the Holy Spirit guiding you and instructing you and so you read that and you take that in, mull it around. Don't just read it real quick. Take your time, read it, get an understanding of it. And then what I realized was I'm not the only one, just like you're not the only one. So if the Lord gives you a verse, if the Holy Spirit inspires you, gives you a, some scripture, gives you a Bible verse, after you're done reading that, make sure you apply it to your life, then share it with others. Don't say, hey, this is for you, but say, hey, this might be for you. Just like I'm going to do today, I know there's someone out there that's going to get something out of this. And if you know someone that it's going to bless, please share it with them as well. So, as most of you know, it's been a transitioning year for me. A lot going on. Closed the food pantry, did a few other things. But what I found out is God, Holy Spirit, is leading me into a new path. And I know it's the Holy Spirit because how everything's flowing so easily and so smoothly. So it's really nice to be able to finally sit down and say, okay, Lord, I'm yours. What do you want me to do now that I've stopped doing certain things? What do you want me to do now? I've done the pantry serving for 12 years. What's the next phase that you want me in? And of course, it's stepping up the plate, doing my ministry online with relevance for today. Everything is just flowing, um, different interviews, things like that. We're not only touching scriptural but we're touching life relevant topics that people are dealing with. As most of you know, we just did the one on bullying. Make sure you read that or listen to it. Sorry. We've also uh, done one with some with uh, Travis Noise. We did it on transitioning out of the military, but we touched a lot of things. And I went to boost that post. And what I do is I pay a few dollars so the boost so the post gets advertised around the world in certain places. Well, unfortunately, because I mentioned about the military and the title and the heading and in the write-up, Facebook wouldn't allow me to, to boost that one. So it didn't get to reach many people, but I'm going to tweak it and do a few things so it can get out there and reach folks. So with that being said, I want to share this today. I just want to go ahead and open up in prayer because this is important. I'm going to be sharing out of 1 Kings, and it's about Elijah and Elisha. And it's a very important small passage of Scripture that is going to help you as well as me. I know there's someone out there this is going to help. And if it's you, please make sure you leave a comment. Let me know what's going on in your life. Share it with others. Get the community talking. 
So Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity this morning to share this word that you put on my heart, that you put me in, that you've allowed me to speak to others that's encouraged them and strengthened them. Lord, I ask that there be one person out there, just one. No, you know what, Lord, ask it and you shall receive it. I'm asking for thousands to hear this message and to be able to step up and step out and encourage, be encouraged so that they can go out and do what you've called them to do. I thank you for this. Bless this word, Lord, because it's yours. Thank you for this opportunity in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, folks. So we're going to dig right in. I'm going to read it out of the New King James as well as the New Living Translation. Once again, my go-to Bible, the New Spirit-Filled Life, New Living Translation Bible. Okay, so we are going to be in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 19 through 21. And keep in mind, if you have not read about Elijah the prophet, make sure you go into first Kings and, and read about him because it's powerful, mighty man of God, but he also went through some life changing things as well, just like we do. So we're coming up to a point where he pretty much was ready to give up. God went on and had him go out and anoint other people to do the new calling, to be the new King, to be the prophet that was going to come after him. So I want to read this to you, and then I'm going to read it out of the New King James, and then we're going to talk about it for a couple minutes. So the call of Elisha, so Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, and the prophet was Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H. So Elijah went and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, Shaphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elijah was plowing with the 12th team. <clears throat> Excuse me. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders and then walked away. Elijah left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah, and said to him, First, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. Elijah replied, go on back, but think about what I have done to you. So Elijah returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the townspeople and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistant. That small passage of scripture describes what happens when God calls you to do something. Right there. So Elijah comes up and he puts his cloak on him. Also a mantle. Okay. Same thing. New King James. I'll go ahead and read that real quick. That way we can, we can discuss that. So I'll read that again because in New, in New King James it says mantle. So chapter 19, once again starting with verse 19. So he departed from there and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the 12th. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. So once again, same thing. So if you picture, I want you to picture something right now. Elijah, the prophet, the called man of God who was sent to go and get Elisha walks up to him. And of course, you got to realize that Elisha also recognized him as being a prophet. He recognized him as being an anointed man of God. Otherwise, he wouldn't even have bothered to go with him in the first place. So that's a good testimony right there. So he walks up puts his mantle on him. So you could look at like, I was at a church service recently 
uh, Steve Young was preaching down, good friend of mine, he was preaching, they had a cloth there, and I ended up speaking about this passage of scripture, which really touched the lady's life, Lois Flewellen, um, God's got her shifting in some different areas. And so when they were talking before the service, I brought this passage of scripture up because I felt the Holy Spirit nudging me to share that. And so when I did, immediately Steve Young looked at me and said, I know what we're going to do. We ended up using that cloth, that prayer cloth, as a symbol, symbolization of a mantle being draped on her. And that's exactly what happened. Elijah walked up, put his anointing, put his calling on Elijah, just as if God told you, which he has many of you, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. And I know I've talked about these things before, what's your calling, get up and start doing it. But this passage of scripture takes you that step further because it not only says he put the mantle on him, but then Elijah walked away after putting the mantle on him, which left Elisha with the choice he had to make. Do I keep plowing in the field or do I go with that anointed man of God who just called me out for such a time as this? So then he said, let me go say goodbye. Elijah told him, make sure you remember what I did to you. Think about it. And it's the same thing with us. It's almost like count the cost before you step up and do what I'm calling you to do. So it's the same thing with you. You have to sit back. You know, for me, it was sitting back and saying, okay, count the cost. Are you really ready to do podcasting, trying to do two or three every week, getting in the word, studying and, and sharing words and spending money to make sure that people can hear this, these words all around the world? And it's like, yes, Lord, I'm ready. I am just doing it. Well, that's what happened with Elijah. The same thing for him. He had to sit back and say, okay, I'm plowing for a living. I'm a farmer. I'm working in this field right now. Do I keep doing what I'm doing or do I follow the man of God? Well, he didn't think twice about it. And it doesn't say it right there that he stopped and mulled it over for five hours. He immediately said, let me go say goodbye and I'm coming. Now, the next step is he went, and this is important, people, please listen to me. If you don't get anything out of this, you listen to this part right now because I've talked about callings and giftings before. He went back, he slaughtered the ox, and I know it sounds violent, but what he did was his livelihood, he went back to his livelihood, whatever his job was, and he destroyed it. He destroyed it out of his mind. He burnt his past job. So he took the ox and slaughtered them. He took the cart. So now he had no way of returning back to being a farmer again. He was in it to win it. Committed. He said, he just went back and did it. Fed the food to the, the townspeople. It was all gone. And then he said goodbye to his parents, of course. Pew, he was gone. He didn't mull it over and think twice. He was gone to the next step of the calling that God had for him. And that was following Elijah, becoming, you might as well say he was his mentor. He trained him up to be a prophet. And when Elijah went up to heaven, that's when Elisha took over and had the double portion and the blessings. But that's a different story. But the bottom line is this. So I'm telling you this. So how does this pertain to you folks? First of all, I hope you took the time to get your Bible out. If you didn't get it out yet, pause this podcast, get your Bible out, read that passage of scripture. I'll give it to you one more time. First Kings chapter 19 verses 19 through 21. Very important passage of scripture. Now you read that and you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and give you the right answers for whatever it is that God's called you to do. What are you waiting on? You know, I've talked about these things before, but like I said, get past that portion. So we already know you're called, just like I've been called to do what I'm doing now so that you can hear these messages that the Holy Spirit's inspiring me to give. So we got that part out of the way. Now the next part you and I have to do is burn the past. 
okay? Now, when I say burn the past, I'm not just saying, okay, well, I used to be a Bible study teacher, so I've got to burn the past out of my mind. I'm talking about past hurts. I'm talking about altercations you may have had with people. I'm talking about whatever situation that's hindering you in the back of your mind to stay focused and move forward in the calling that God has for you. That's what I'm talking about, take it and burn it. Remember, Elijah went back, he burned the, he cooked the oxen, he burned up his plow, he had no way of returning back to his job, and it did not say he went to go with Elijah, but then he kept going back to where the burnt offering was, where the burnt meat and the burnt cart was, his plow. And he just sifted through it all the time, thinking about, oh, I burnt the plow, I burnt the cow. No, he didn't think about it anymore. He burnt it up. The folks ate the, the meat. I'm sure he ate some too. The plow was burnt to ashes and probably blown away in the wind. It was gone. What is going on in your mind right now that's kinder, hindering you from stepping into the next step? Got you, didn't I? I had to do this for me. I tell you what, the, the mind, oh my gosh, your mind will get going. Should I do this? Should I do that? What about this? What about that? What about this? What this one thinks? What about what that one thinks? Guess what, folks? At the end of the day, guess who's going to be standing before the Lord with you? No one. Remember that. Stop trying to carry people along with you. Stop trying to focus on, well, I'm worried about what this one thinks. I better check with them first. Holy Spirit called you to do something. God called you to do something. He has an assignment for you. Just like Elijah. Elijah did not go into the town of Shaphat and say, everybody gather together. I'm calling everybody. Here's my mantle. I'm going to drape it across every single one of you because you're all called. He didn't do that. He went to one individual. He went to Elisha, put his mantle on him and walked away. Reminds you of, it's a picture of Jesus when he called the disciples. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Elijah drapes that mantle on him. Let's go. Whatever God has called you to do, folks, do it. Stay focused. You get yourself some good people around you. I've got some great brothers and sisters in Christ, very supportive. You know who you are. Thank you all for your prayers. And when I say supportive, I'm talking about your prayer time, your prayers, your encouragement towards me. Get around some like-minded individuals who are definitely Christ-like and they're showing you the love. No jealousy and all that craziness, none of that stuff. The ones that are going to show you love no matter what, no matter what your decisions are in life, they're going to show you love. They're going to be supportive of the ministry God's called you to be. That's what you want. And then you get out there and you get started. Surround yourself with a team of individuals who will pray for you who will back you 100%. They'll sit back with you and sit down and talk to you. You can share your ideas with them, and it's a blessing, and you're encouraged, and you're sharing the scripture back and forth. That's what you, who you want to be around. Elijah, drape the mantle. The Lord put a mantle on you. The Lord put a calling on you. Whatever it is, don't be afraid. Step out. Step out, folks. Burn the past. That's the important part on this one. Like I said, I've talked many times about what's your calling, what has God called you to do. Praise God, Jeffrey finally got his book written. Proud of you, Jeffrey. It's going to be an amazing book. He got out there and he got it done. Whatever God's called you to do, get out there, do it. Burn the past, because I'm telling you, the enemy will have you sitting back, mulling through the ashes of what you used to be doing instead of you putting your eyes on the prize that God has you doing. It's all for his glory, whatever it is. And you'll know what it is. It's going to impact lives. It's going to impact lives for the Lord, for the kingdom. It's going to make kingdom differences, not just a worldly difference where anybody could do it. It's going to make a difference where it's going to impact lives and people are going to say, wow, oh my gosh, thank you, Lord, for choosing this person 
to do what they're doing. And you're going to walk in boldness and you're going to have the Holy Spirit within you giving you the strength that you need to step forward. Erase the chalkboard, folks. I'm telling you. Doesn't matter what people think. You heard people call them haters. Forget about the haters. Focus on the lovers. There you go. Haters versus lovers. That's kind of a podcast right there. Even though you still have to love the haters, but the bottom line is anybody trying to put a a wrench in the system, stay focused. Burn the past. If nothing else comes from this message today for you, burn the past, get it out of your mind, get it gone. Think like God thinks. When he forgave you, when you asked Jesus Christ into your life, the chalkboard was erased completely erased everything gone for good no more chalk on it gone erase your past erase what's going on in your head because god has forgiven you for everything but also whatever you've stepped away from whatever you have to step away from in order to do this calling go in boldness burn it get going forward folks this is a message for me this is a message for many of you out there It's time. God is raising up an army of individuals who are going to get up, get out, get the job done, burn their past, put it all in the Lord's hands, and go forward with what they need to do. Keep that in mind, folks. What came to me just now was a short story real quick. I'll tell you this one story, and then I'm going to wrap it up and close in prayer. So there was this woman, and this is talking about taking your past, laying it at the Lord's feet. She was stressed, depressed. She was a hot mess. She didn't know what to do. She's praying and she's, and and it's like a vision she's having. So all of a sudden she goes up to the Lord. She's like, Lord, please take this away from me. Take all my burdens away from me. I just can't handle anymore. I want to do what you call me to do, but I just, I can't get past everything going on in my life. It's just terrible. So he says, okay, give me your burdens. So she grabs them all in a bag, throws it on her shoulder. He, she gives it to him. And she says, now I want you to go in that room and you go find someone else's bag of burdens and you can take theirs on. And she's like, oh, thank you so much. Just a little bag, you know, and uh, not take them on, but, you know, you can trade them out. So she goes in this room and she sees bags of all shapes and sizes, huge ones. Looks like they're the size of houses. And she's walking through and it's almost like a city of bags of burdens. And she goes around the corner and she sees this little tiny bag, little tiny one. And she goes, that's the one I want. So she grabs it and comes back out and the Lord says, that's the one you want? She goes, yep. And he said, look in it. And when she looked in it, it was her own stuff. So here she thought, life was terrible. I can't do what God's called me to do. I've got so many terrible things going on in my life, so many burdens. And when she saw that bag, she thought that it was going to be better than the one she had and come to find out it was her own stuff, which meant nothing compared to some of the things going on in the world, some of the things that people are going through. And so the reason why I shared that is because we need to stay focused, stay focused, take that stuff throw it out the window, lay it at the Lord's feet and get ready, get ready, get ready. It's like sitting on an airplane with your parachute on and it's your turn to jump. Are you going to jump off and do what God called you to do? Or are you going to sit back on the plane and just stay in in the plane seat? It's time folks. I'm telling you, you know, the world's changing. You see it all around you. Just watch the news. I know I encourage people not to watch the news all the time because it's just so much mess going on and lies and foolishness. But turn the news on for a day, watch the news for a day, and then you'll realize that we're in the end times. So we need, God needs people to step up, rise up, forget about your burdens, forget about your past, lay it all at the Lord's feet and get focused, get your mind right, get started. It's time, folks. Boots to the ground. We need you. God needs you. We need you. You have something the world needs, no matter what country you're in. Doesn't make a difference. God can use you. He wants to use you. If he calls you to do something, don't say, who am I, Lord? No, Moses. No. Not going to be like Moses and say, who am I, Lord? I have a stutter. I can't do this. I can't speak to people. I'm not confident enough. It's going to be none of that. It's going to be, yes, Lord, I'm ready. 
putting my boots on. Let's get going. Sound good, folks? Encouragement. Let's go ahead and pray. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to share this message this morning. I thank you for guiding me to this passage of Scripture and explain it to me the way you have so that I can explain it to others. Lord, I pray right now for all those individuals out there who are struggling with their past, struggling with decisions they may have made to step away from different places and different things. Lord, give them the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to know that you are the source. You, your love, your powerful love, the love that you have for us is going to carry us through. Heavenly Father, strengthen each and every individual listening to the sound of my voice that they may step up to the plate, be the men and God, men and men of God and women of God that you called us to be because there's work to be done. We know that the harvest is ripe and the workers are few. So we're praying right now, Lord, praying right now in the name of Jesus Christ for more workers to step up to the plate. We know the end times are coming. We know that we're in the end days closer than we were yesterday. And Lord, we just ask you strengthen individuals, give them the resources they need, the prayer warriors, the finances, whatever needs to be done so that people will be reached outside of the buildings, Lord. The world is hurting. Lord, you know this already. The world is hurting. You need us to step up, step out, and be who you called us to be, the true body of Christ. We thank you, Lord. Bless each and every individual listening to the sound of my voice and watching this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your love and for all your grace and forgiveness. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. There you have it, folks. Hey powerful stuff. I don't have enough words. It's time. It is time. It is time. We need to get out here. We've been equipped with some great material. We've been equipped with the best weapon out there, the sword, the word of God right here. Love conquers all. Get out there with love. Whatever the Holy Spirit is guiding you to do, whatever you've been called to do, you get out there Put on love. Watch what happens. I'm telling you, you throw that love on there, you burn your past, you get on with life. It's time. We need you. People need you. I need you. The Lord definitely needs you to step up and get started. So with that being said, God bless you all. Thank you so much. I love you all. Love you all. Take care of yourselves. God bless. Peace.